Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm going to do a comparison of the two versions of the Garmin Tactics 8, the OLED and the Solar Edition. Now, I'm doing this comparison because I don't have a local store where I can go and compare these two side by side. And I wanted to know the difference between the OLED and the Solar. So I ordered both of them and I want to compare them so that you can see the difference between them as well. So I've got the boxes for both of them right here. I've got the Solar Sapphire and the AMOLED Sapphire, and I have both of the watches right here. Both watches are larger than last year's edition, the Tactic 7. I guess it's more than a few years, but the Tactic 7, a little bit smaller, so you have a little bit bigger of a display. I did have the Tactic 7 previous to this, and I had the Solar Edition, which is why I was interested in trying out the OLED, because I thought, you know, after seeing the Phoenix 8 and how beautiful the OLED display is on that, I thought, man, maybe I want the Tactics 8 OLED instead. But I had sold my Tactics 7, and I needed both of them so that I could do a comparison for myself and for others as well. So if you find this interesting and you're trying to decide which one to order, once you make that decision, I've got links down in the description below. So hopefully after the end of this video, I'll help you make your decision and you can use the links in the description below to order one of these watches from Amazon. They've got good prices on them and of course, great return policy with Amazon. So I felt safe and secure ordering mine from there as well. So here are both of the watches. The AMOLED display is always gonna be this bright when it comes on, unless you change the brightness level, of course. But the Solar Edition has this always on display version that is very dim. And then when you tap on the display, it brightens up. You can see things a lot better. The OLED display is always gonna need to turn off to preserve battery because the OLED display is gonna use a lot more battery life than the display on the Solar Edition, just due to the technology of the display. And so whenever I move my OLED display watch, it will pop on. It doesn't come like this out of the box. Out of the box, you actually have to tap on the display to get the screen to come on. I think that with the OLED display, it really taxes the battery life on this watch, on pretty much any watch that has an OLED display. And so out of the box, Garmin had it so that you have to tap on the display to get the screen to come on. Now, I don't like that. When I rotate my wrist, I want the display to come on. And so I enabled gesture so that it would wake upon gesture and I could see the display. But I've been wearing this watch for over a week and a half now, maybe closer to two weeks. And I've had to charge the battery twice now already. That's something that I never would have had to do with my Tactic 7. Let's just take a look at where the battery's at now. Last night, I did charge this to 100%. And it is about 2.30 or almost three o'clock in the afternoon the next day. And so I'm at 93% on the battery right now. And I didn't do any workouts today, didn't do anything other than just get up and start my day. So I've lost 7% battery and it says 20 days of battery life, but I'd be surprised if I could get 20 days of battery life if I'm, you know, the OLED display's coming on. When I look at the watch, it's using up a lot more juice and I'm gonna have to charge that watch a lot more often. Now with the solar display, the solar display goes into this low power mode that just sips electricity. And so your battery life lasts a really long time because of that. You can see it did brighten up when I tapped on the display or when I rotate the watch, it does brighten up because I turned the brightness up on the watch. This watch of course has a brightness feature just like the OLED edition with the settings where they're at on both of these watches. They're about equal as far as brightness. What you can tell is that there is a clarity difference on the OLED. The OLED, the colors pop more and things just look a little bit more sharp. If you look really close on both of these watches, you can tell sharpness differences around the letters and the numbers that are on the display. You can tell that the OLED display is a bit sharper. And that's simply because the OLED display technology has a lot more pixels per inch. And so everything's gonna look a bit more sharp than it will on this other watch. But the battery life trade-off is really the main issue here between these two watches. So let's take a look at their viewing angle to the side. You can see they're both highly reflective. So if I have a light shining, I've got my light off camera, it's almost impossible to really see what's going on. But if I rotate the watches to the side here, you can see both of them have really good viewing angles from the side. And I'd say, you know, the issue being that this watch is always going to go into a sleep mode, whereas the solar watch is never gonna go into a sleep mode because it can sustain having an always on display, whereas the OLED cannot. So let's rotate in the other direction here. The OLED definitely is a little bit brighter. I'm having a hard time controlling my glares here, which is also part of the issue. But the OLED display 
is significantly brighter. But like I said, it's always gonna go into that off position, whereas the solar has an always on display. Now let's just walk around the watch a little bit. I really like the upgrades to the operating system on the watch. I love the four different categories for activities here, making it much easier to get to everything that you're looking for. And of course, everything is nice and vibrant on the OLED watch as far as the display goes. Everything's easy to read from pretty much any angle. Even if it's very bright outside, very easy to read and see everything on the display. Just navigating through everything. That was the biggest thing to me after having the solar edition of the Tactic 7 for several years. Coming to the OLED, it's just like, oh, color. It's so bright. It's very beautiful. I love seeing all of the color on the OLED display. But like I said, I've already had to charge this watch twice in the last two weeks. And that's a lot considering I was used to charging it maybe one time a month, one and a half times a month at the most. We do have the flashlight on the front here, nice bright flashlight, and you can adjust the brightness value of the flashlight as well. So when I double press, I can swipe up and down and get different brightnesses on the flashlight. I absolutely love using the flashlight simply because I wake up early in the morning. I want to go and get my shoes on, go downstairs and work out or go outside. And I don't want to wake anybody else up in the house. And the flashlight is an easy way of getting around my house without having to turn on any lights. Obviously, the Solar Edition has the exact same flashlight and it works the same way and also has the green light as well, just like the OLED edition. But as we navigate around in the solar edition, you can see we've got the same user interface here, but things are just maybe a little bit dimmer and not quite as sharp and the colors don't pop quite as well. Keep in mind, I am at 100% on the brightness right now on this watch. If I go into settings and scroll down to display and brightness right here. You can see I'm at 100% with the brightness. Now, if we go over to the OLED edition and we go down to display and brightness, we've got always on display, which I have set to off and we have brightness and we'll set it to 100% here. You have essentially three different brightness levels on the OLED watch. Whereas on the solar watch, you have a variety of different brightness levels there. So brightness at full on the OLED watch is very bright and you'll be able to see this on a bright day easily just because of how bright this display is. So other than that, both watches are the exact same body. Everything is the same. They feel the same. There are little differences between last year's edition, but as far as the body of the watch, no differences here. Both watches are the exact same. Now there are some significant differences between the Tactics 7 and the new Tactics 8. For example, the first thing that I noticed besides the body of the watch looking a little bit bigger and a bit nicer is that the buttons were much nicer to press. I mean, just the feeling of pressing the buttons, the experience there was better and the haptics within the watch were significantly better. The Tactic 7 felt to me like it had an old pager vibrating motor in it. It just didn't have a very appealing haptic to it when it would vibrate, but the Tactics 8 has a very appealing haptic to it. It is nice. When it vibrates, it feels like what I would expect from a modern smartwatch. So as I said at the beginning, I'm not making this video to do a spec comparison or anything like that. Both of these watches are the exact same, but I wanted to share my experiences and my feelings between both the OLED and the solar display. Me personally, I do really like the OLED display. It's very nice. It's easy to look at. The colors are great. It is a beautiful display and Garmin did a great job with it. But the Solar Edition has extremely long battery life. And when you're going out on longer runs, when you need to use GPS, maybe you're using the aviation tools on the watch as well, and it's taxing the battery on the watch, you're gonna have a significantly smaller amount of time to use that watch with the OLED display, especially if you need that display to be on. I'm envisioning myself using it for aviation purposes, having always on display turned on and not even being able to get maybe more than a full day's use of battery out of it, which is fine. You bring your charger, you plug it in and you charge it up. And that's not gonna be the everyday use case for me. I am definitely not going to use the aviation features maybe more than once or twice a month, but I want a watch that I don't have to think about. That's the main reason why I'm using a Garmin watch as opposed to the Apple Watch Ultra. I want a watch that I don't have to charge every single day. And an Apple Watch, I'm gonna have to do that. A Garmin watch, I don't wanna have to charge my watch. I wanna be able to take off for a week, go on vacation, go on a work trip or something like that, 
and not even have to bring a charger or worry about charging my watch. That's the beauty of the Garmin watch and of course all of the other amazing features that come along with it that most other smartwatches don't have. So that's going to do it for this video. I mainly just wanted to show you the different displays and show you the difference between them. They're both amazing watches. I love the design and the shape of them and the features that they come with, but I also highly desire long battery life. And because of that, I'm probably gonna be sticking with the solar edition because I'm simply used to that display. And while it would be nice to have a brighter OLED display, the lifespan of a single charge is what's most important to me considering that there are no other feature differences between these watches other than the display technology. So if there's anything that I missed that you have a question about, you can ask that down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer it. But I simply wanted to do a display comparison for those of you who are having the same thoughts or issues as me in deciding which version of the Tactics 8 to go with. Make sure to use those links down in the description below to check out availability and pricing on Amazon. And if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in the next one. Take care.